All right, everyone, thank you for joining for today's webinar. My name is Dana Nguyen, and I'm on the Google Apps for Education and Chromebook for Education team. And I'm a huge Chromey. I'm a huge Chrome nerd, and I love web apps and extensions. And last week, I did a webinar on uh, Chrome Ninja Tips. So if you're not familiar with Chrome yet, I highly recommend that webinar. I linked to that past webinar page already. Uh, if you pull it up, I have it up here you'll see that we have the archive webinars available on this view archive page. I think I linked directly to it, actually. And you'll see that the slides and the Chrome Ninja Tips are available, as well as the WebEx version. So the YouTube uh, version of the recorded webinar is coming soon. We're currently uploading that. Um, and then if you want to follow along with today's slides, I have them here as well. You can access them. Uh, and so let me go ahead and get started with what we'll be covering today. Oh, and if you want to follow along on Twitter or on Google+, Plus, you can use this hashtag. I'm using the Chrome Ninja hashtag. So uh, today I'm going to talk very briefly about what extensions and web apps are and, and what they do in Chrome. I'll show you how you can find and install web apps and extensions and also give you some tips on how to manage them. Um, and then I have lots and lots and lots of examples to go through, and I also want to open it up to you guys. So when we get to that example section, if there are web apps or extensions that you use that you want to share, I'd love to be able to uh, tell everybody else about them as well. So I'm going to go ahead and just get started with what are web apps and extensions. So if, the, if you've used Chrome, uh, if you haven't used Chrome yet, uh, I would recommend downloading it. It's at google.com slash chrome. Um, and, and then you can follow along and install these as well. Oh, and one last piece of housekeeping. If you have questions throughout the webinar, please type them in the Q&A box. And I'll do my best to try and monitor that during the webinar. But if not, I will definitely ask, answer those questions at the end of the webinar. Um, and then when I'm asking for any favorite web apps and extensions, you can feel free to type them in the chat box at that time. But again, questions, try and ask them in the Q&A box. That way we can save that transcript and share it later. So back to the new tab page. So when you are using Chrome um, on a Mac, on a PC, or you're using a Chromebook or on Linux, uh, you will always see this new tab page. And this happens whenever you open a new tab. So I'm opening a new tab. You can see it live. And what you'll see is you have your tabs, you have your Omnibox, and then you've got these little icons that kind of stay next to your Omnibox. And these are your extensions. And then in that main section of the page, you'll see your web app. So actually, you can navigate between web apps and your most visited sites. So if you see down here in my bar, you'll see most visited. I've got apps, and I also have something called fun. And I'll, I'll show how you can rename those. But most visited are your most visited websites, and then apps are your, are your web apps. So I just want to show, you know, if you've seen somebody else's browser have these icons or have other big icons show up and wondering what those were, those are the um, extensions and web apps. So why would you use web apps and extensions? So web apps and extensions are kind of a, an extra credit of using Chrome. Chrome is a great browser. It's very fast. It gets you where you need to go and gets the information that you need to know. Um, but sometimes you want a little bit more out of your browser, and that's where web apps and extensions come in. So they allow you to customize your Chrome experience and uh, let you add different functionality or shortcuts or um, quick access to your favorite sites. Um, they're instantaneous. So when you install them, you don't have to restart your browser. You don't have to um, worry about updating them. There's no updating procedure. It's just they're automatically updated. Uh, and so it's a very easy way to uh, add these different functionalities to your browser. And they're always available with sync. And I'll talk about that um, a bit later on how to set that up. But you can actually sync your Chrome extensions and web apps to your Google account. And then whenever you're signed into that Google account, be it another browser or if you log into it on a Chromebook, those extensions and web apps will stay with you. So they're not tied to your computer. So if you use multiple computers, you can have your extensions and web apps and custom Chrome experience available on any uh, computer that you use with Chrome. So uh, what are extensions? So there's somewhat of a confusion between what extensions are and what web apps are. So I'll try and, uh, I'll try and get through what I see are the differences. And if you guys have any additional questions, you can feel free to ask. Um, extensions are custom features and functionality that oops, sorry, custom features and functionalities that you can add to Google Chrome. 
And so basically, uh, they allow you to get bonus information about a page. So there are some extensions that give you more relevant links or um, they give you more information. Um, they, get, they allow you to get timely notifications. So you might notice that you can see, uh, for example, I, I have the, the weather of today right here um, showing up right in my browser bar. And if you have a Gmail notification, you can see how many messages are in your inbox. So they can be little, little alerts that are showing up with, with uh, notifications. You can also do things with fewer clicks. So there are some popular um, extensions that allow you to zoom in very easily on, on pictures and uh, other ones that allow you to have shortcuts to create tasks or to add clips or notebooks or search different things very easily. So it kind of allows you to speed up your whole browsing experience. And, and also, if you have certain services that you like, it, it allows you to access those services very quickly, like Evernote or Google Tasks. And another thing to note about um, uh, about extensions that I forgot to put on here is that they don't interrupt your browsing experience. So uh, when I'm using an extension, for example, if I pull up Google Tasks, you'll see that uh, it pulls up as kind of a bubble overlaying my um, overlaying what I have uh, on my browser window. So it doesn't go to a new site; it just shows up here. You'll see some other things that I have, like if I pull up my Google Calendar, you'll see whatever I have on my calendar. And again, it doesn't open up a new tab. It doesn't change what page that I'm on because I don't want to leave my presentation that I'm showing right now. So that's the nice thing about extensions is that they kind of can pop in and out without disturbing the rest of your browsing experience. So what are web apps? The so web apps are web-based applications um, that are designed to be used entirely within the browser. So many of you are probably already using web apps because it's basically some of those very dynamic programs that you use online. So it used to be that you could really only have great email capabilities if you installed software onto your computer and used some kind of client software. And it also used to be that, you know, you could only listen to music and organize music by having software installed on your computer. But these days, there are a lot of dynamic websites that allow you to do things that you didn't used to do in a browser, like drag and drop, or be able to upload and manage different types of files. So I can think of, you know, for example, Gmail, or if you're using Pandora or um, Google Music, um, there's also, you know, Google Maps. These are all very dynamic types of applications or, or programs, really, that may have may look like, if it were 10 years ago, something that you would have had to buy and install on your computer. But these days, it's available just to use in your browser. Um, and so web apps are, are um, basically those types of dynamic sites, and a lot of them you might already use today. Web apps don't crash your computer. So sometimes you might notice with other client software, so client software is software that you have to actually install on your hard drive and that is specific to your computer. Um, those, those can actually end up crashing your computer if something goes wrong. Web apps really are independently operated within a tab of your browser. So, in fact, you can just close a tab or you can um, uh, exit the task of that, of that particular app and it doesn't actually affect the rest of the tabs that you have open. So it helps uh, streamline your experience if there's ever any problems. And having those independent processes also means that it won't disturb whatever else you're doing on your web app. So uh, another thing that you can do with web apps is that it will show the app icon in Chrome. So you can easily find and launch apps in the new tab page. So if I go back to my new tab page, you'll see that I've got all of these different icons. And so these icons on my new tab page, these are my web apps. While the little icons that I have that stay with me everywhere I go when I go to different websites, these are extensions. So that's kind of one difference. Big icons are web apps. Little icons, these are your extensions. So how do you find web apps and extensions? So you use the Chrome Web Store. So to clarify, I've gotten questions in the past if the Chrome Web Store is the same thing as the Android Marketplace or the Google Apps uh, Marketplace. And so those are actually separate things. So if you install something on your Android phone, that is specific to the Android operating system and is not related to Chrome. 
So if you want it, but oftentimes many things exist in multiple places. So just so you know, your Android market um, apps are not the same as your Chrome web apps and extensions. The Chrome web apps and extensions you can get to from the Chrome web store. So if I open a new tab, you notice the Chrome web store will always show up in this upper left corner. So if I go into the Chrome Web Store, we recently got a nice redesign. And so in the Chrome Web Store, you can find new apps and extensions and themes. You can view ratings and users, and you can install with just one click. And one thing that's kind of nice about the, the new Chrome Web Store, I don't know if you guys have spent much time on it, it, it has really nice images, and when you mold roll over it or mouse over it, it'll actually give you that rating and it'll show um, kind of the, the basic information. When you click on one, you'll see you'll get more of the details. You'll get an overview. There's a, a bunch of different screenshots that give you some good idea of what that web app will look like. The details will have some more information about the versions and just what that web app can do. And then you can go into the reviews and see how many people like this application. You'll also see links to the category that is a part of the, or that, that web app belongs to. So in the Chrome Web Store, uh, one thing that's nice also with the new Web Store redesign is it pretty much has infinite scroll. I have not yet found a way to get to the end of the Web Store. It just seems to keep on going, so that's nice. So what you might also notice when I'm browsing here is that there are some icons that have this nice little green line with a check mark. And that means that I've already installed them. So if I mouse over it, you'll see that it says added to Chrome. Or if I mouse over it, this one, it'll say launch app. And so that's one way that I can, I can see, you know, which ones have I already installed. So another thing to note in the Chrome Web Store is that we've got a bunch of different categories, and we also have search. So search is great if you know exactly what you're looking for, but these are some other ways to browse. So if you look, you can find some popular items. I've got a lot installed from there. You can see different collections, so, you know, based on different business tools, you might find some things here that you find interesting. And then we also have things like uh, the education category, which has got some, some suggestions here, some entertainment, um, we've got different games, etc. So you can navigate via these different uh, categories, but you can also search. For example, maybe I'm looking for a screenshot. I can just search for screenshot. I'm sure I'm going to get lots of different results. So these little um, uh, ones here, if they have a little check mark next to the name, it means that it was created by the owner of this website. So it's kind of a verification to say, we know who created this. This website created this. So you can see um, all these different types of screenshots, different um, extensions. So one other quick tip to note, if you notice, all of these have a kind of puzzle piece around them and an icon inside. Well, if I go to the Chrome Web Store homepage, you'll see that some of these just have an icon, and they don't necessarily have that little puzzle piece. Let me find another one that's got a puzzle piece, puzzle piece down here. So right here, the Google Plus One button, it's got a puzzle piece, and when I roll over it, I see that puzzle piece. So a puzzle piece means that it's an extension. And again, those extensions are the ones that kind of run in the background that are available here when you need them. They don't show up on your new tab page um, as big icons. They stay here as little icons. While these other ones that have just normal icons, those are going to be your web apps that will show up there. So how do you install a web app? So if I click on, let's say, Good Food, this actually looks like a, I'm, I'm a huge foodie, I love cooking, I love eating, so uh, this looks like a good web app for me. I can go ahead and scroll through here, get some more information, and then with one click, I can just click Add to Chrome. So I'm going to go ahead and install. And you'll notice that now it opens my new tab page. And it opens a new tab page because it wants to show me that it installed my web app. So if I just, now I can just click on my web app, and it'll go ahead and launch that site. And so um, many sites, actually, or many web apps can be uh, designed specifically for HTML5. So another good example of that is, um, is the uh, New York Times web app that looks, uh, looks a little different. Um, but this is, uh, this is the Good Food web app. So, you know, it kind of looks like a website, but it's a little bit more full screen. Um, tender braised leeks. So I had a bunch of leeks. This looks like a good one. So, you know, there's lots of kind of interesting ways that they generate 
their web app um, here. So that's just one click to install web app. Now let's try installing a uh, extension. So we actually have a category here just for extensions because um, they're, they're very useful. So I'm going to go ahead and do the Amazon Wishlist extension. So I shop very frequently on Amazon. I'm an Amazon Time member. I don't think a week goes by when I don't buy something on Amazon. And now that the holidays are coming, I think that the Amazon Wishlist could be a helpful thing to help them inform my family and friends if they're looking for something, they could probably find it on Amazon. But the nice thing about the Amazon wish list is it doesn't actually require it to be from Amazon. It can be from any product on the web. So now you see I get a notification that said that the Amazon wish list is installed. And it looks like it's also going to open a new web page for me that will show some additional information. So now I can try it out. It shows me I can find it right here. So if I just click on the extension, it says uh, there's, it's all set up, it's going to stay here, and then I just click this button while I'm shopping on any store to save it to my wish list. So that's, uh, that's another extension. So now you'll notice that it pops up right here. And again, one-click installation, I did not have to reinstall or restart, rather, my browser. And if Amazon ever updates that extension, that'll come automatically. I won't have to do anything. I won't even have to update it. So that's how you find and install different web apps and extensions from the Chrome Web Store. So now let's talk about managing them. So on the new tab page, and you can get there by doing a, pressing this kind of you know, new tab button. Usually, I'm in Chrome Canary, which might have uh, might look a little different from what Chrome browser you're using. Uh, or you can hit Command or Control T, and that'll open a new tab. So there's a few things that you can do here in the new tab page. You can drag and drop your icons. So if I want to move YouTube, I can move it all around. I'm just dragging and dropping it. Some other things you can do is you'll notice at the bottom I have different categories. So maybe I want to move YouTube. I can move YouTube. See, it just started. I can move it to a new category. And so now I've got several different web app categories. These are kind of groups. So you can imagine if you wanted to group your different web apps, you could do it that way. You can also do that by just clicking and moving over that arrow to the next screen. So if I want to stay on this screen, now I have it on my second screen. So that's a way that you can kind of group your web apps into different folders. Now if I want to rename this one, so maybe I want to rename this one to video, so I could add maybe Netflix or Hulu here as well. I could double click and type in video. So now I have some different labels for all of my different categories that I have here. And again, if I want to move them, I can click and hold it. I can move it down here and drag it onto any of these other ones that I have. Or I can use the arrows to move it back and forth. Or I can just leave it where it is. So another thing, oops, let me go back to my uh, presentation here. Another thing that you can do is select options on how to open your web app. So if I right-click, and on a Mac, you can control-click or do a two-finger click, you can choose from your web app to open it as a pinned tab, to open it in full screen, or to open it as a regular tab. So if you're not familiar with pinned tabs, those open all the way over to the left, and they kind of become minimized. And you can think of these as almost your, your favorite tabs or your docked tabs. They'll show up again when you open your Chrome browser. They kind of stay with you as your as your home tabs almost. So I could choose to open this as full screen. Um, actually, full screen doesn't quite work when I'm in um, in uh, WebEx, but I can choose to open it as a pin tab. Now, if I click on Gmail, you'll see it opens to that far left in a pin tab. So some other options there is that um, if, if some of these web apps have different options. So if I go and I click on options, it'll pull up the options for that web app, which in this case would be my Google Mail settings. So this is just our demo account. Uh, and you can find other options for other web apps that you might install. So, you know, I actually don't know what the options are for the that new Good, good Food um, web app that I installed. So let's see. If I go to, oh, it looks like it doesn't have options. But other ones might have options. So now that, that's your web apps. To manage your extensions, you can go into the extension manager. So for the extension manager, you can actually type in your browser window, Chrome, colon, slash, slash, extensions. 
Or you can go into your wrench tool, you can go into tools, and then you can go into extensions. They'll both take you to the same place. You notice that now it says um, Chrome Settings Extension. And this is all of the extensions that I have installed. So if I scroll through, it's in alphabetical order. So there are a couple of different things that I can do. You'll see that there's a checkbox to enable it. So sometimes you might not want to have it show. Let's say maybe you're doing a presentation and you don't want to have all your web apps show. You can just disable it for the time being, and you'll see that now my weather went away immediately. Or I can enable it and have it come right back. So that way you don't have to reinstall it or add any other options. You can just quickly and easily add or remove it just from appearing here. There are also some additional options, which I can get to either by clicking this kind of down arrow, or if I also click options, there are, there are two different sets of options. So one are kind of the Chrome level options. So allow in incognito. So when you create an incognito window, it doesn't save any of your browsing history. It doesn't save any of your passwords or anything like that. So what you can do is, uh, if you want to, allow in incognito will also show your extension in your incognito window. So if I open a new incognito window, so I'm going to do, you can either do command shift N or you can do a new incognito window, I believe also from the wrench bar, new incognito. You'll see that I have the weather showing up here, but I don't have any of my other extensions. And that's because I need to allow them to be in incognito. So if you use incognito frequently and want to have access to your extensions, you're going to want to see the details of your extension by clicking this down arrow and clicking allow in incognito. So if I uh, go ahead and, and move on, so if I look at options, a lot of these, these extensions have options. You'll, you, it'll either open up another web page or it'll just kind of open up the uh, 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 settings page within Chrome. So let's see, another one that has options. Let's go to maybe Craigslist Preview. It's one of my favorite ones. So Craigslist Preview is one of my favorite extensions that I'll show, which it basically pulls if something has pictures in Craigslist, you don't actually have to click the link. It will show the links or show the pictures right below. So it looks like I can choose with my Craigslist preview extension how many images I want to show and the max size. So maybe I want to make them smaller. I want to make them larger. I can be able to do that within my, my extension options. So again, to get to your extension options, you go to the wrench, you go to tools, and you go to extensions. And that's where you'll be able to find all the different settings for your extensions. And so finally, the last thing is syncing. So syncing allows you to sync your extensions, your web apps, your bookmarks, and all sorts of other uh, information with your account, so your Google account. So if I click on the wrench, you'll see that it's actually signed in as this uh, demo account that I have. And if I want to see that, if I want to change it, if I want to sign out and sign into a different account, I can go into my preferences, again, under that wrench menu, go to preferences. And if I go to personal stuff, you'll see that it says sign in. So I can disconnect my Google account. I can also see what is being synced. So right now, I'm syncing everything. But I can also choose what to sync. I can choose to sync apps, extensions, and themes. Maybe that's all I want to sync. And I could deselect, you know, these other things if I wanted to. I'm going to leave it on thinking everything for right now. So what happens when you sync your account is that if you go into another browser, another Chrome browser on another computer, and you go in and you do this whole sign-in process, you will be able to then have all of your extensions appear and then all of your web apps appear just on that new tab page, just like you did in the first time in whatever computer you were using for your Chrome browser. It also means that when you log into Chromebooks, you'll also find all of your extensions and web apps appearing on your Chromebook. And this will happen with any Chromebook that you install or that you uh, log into. Um, all of your web apps will be installed. So let me just take a quick peek at the questions to see if there is anything about what, what we're seeing here. So uh, in, if you see this on your Google Chrome browser on your Mac, yes, you can absolutely do that. You can add these onto your Google Chrome browser in, on a Mac. And if you do that syncing that I just showed on other browsers on a PC, 
or if you log into just any Chromebook, it'll take all of your extensions and your web apps with you. So I have a question here on, are extensions in my computer also available in a tablet from which I log on as, uh, as well as other computers? So this is all tied to Chrome. So uh, at this time, the Chrome browser is only available on, um, on laptops and desktops. Uh, uh, form factor. So tablets do not have the Chrome browser. Because tablets do not have the Chrome browser, you're unable to access the web apps and extensions that are installed on Chrome. So basically, if you can use Chrome, the browser, then you can have your web apps and extensions come with you anywhere. Now, there was another question on can you sync two Google accounts to your Chrome sync? So at this time, it's only possible to sync one set of uh, of apps and extensions to your um, to your Google account. However, you can log into different accounts on your Chrome browser without necessarily being the same account that you're syncing your web apps and extensions. So for example, I am syncing to you know one account, but my Google Docs account I'm logged into a different one. So you're not necessarily tied to um, using that account for everything. It's really just for bringing up your web apps and extensions. So I'm seeing it looks like there are some people who are saying that the refresh rate on WebEx is very slow. So I'm, I'm sorry to, to show that. Um, there is uh, the, the WebEx, uh, sorry, the slides, and I will go ahead and reping that in the chat box. So if you guys are unable to see what I'm showing, um, you'll be able to see it on the presentation. And if not, I'm also recording this webinar, so you should be able to see it as well. So I apologize for the, um, the lag that's showing up there. So I'm going to go ahead and move on to just some examples. Um, oh, so I have a bunch of videos here, and I'm actually not going to show them, but I wanted to include them in the presentation in case you guys were following along so that you could uh, uh, view them on your own. WebEx doesn't uh, handle YouTube videos very well. It gets pretty laggy, so let me just move forward a few slides. But these are helpful if you're showing other people about the Chrome Web Store and, and um extensions and all that, you can show them those videos. Those are very nice. So these are some of my extensions that I use frequently um, and uh, that I find useful. And I realize um, there's a lot on this page to share, and I really only have about 20 minutes, I guess, to, to go through it if I want to leave some time for questions. So I am going to try and go through these. I, um, um, a lot of them, I think, are, are pretty self-explanatory, but let me just show them. And again, if you link to those slides, you can be able to, we're right now on slide 12, you can click on these links and be able to launch into the Chrome Web Store and you'll be able to install them right there. So the one that I use most frequently actually is Google Voice. And what's nice about the Google Voice extension, I don't have it uh, synced with a, with a Google Voice number right here, but is that it will show you those little alerts. So if I have an unread text message or a missed call or a new voicemail, I'll get a notification right in that in my browser bar via that little Google Voice icon. From this extension, I can also easily text people, I can view my inbox, I can listen to my latest voicemails without having to um, without having to leave the actual uh, without having to leave the actual website. So um, if you want to, if you are using Google Voice, that's something that I recommend, uh, uh, the Google Voice extension. You don't have to open up the whole website. You can do pretty much all that you need to do right within that extension. Google Tasks. So I'm a big fan of Google Tasks, and uh, one of the things that I like about it is uh, it syncs in your Gmail account. So to get to Tasks in Gmail, you go to Gmail, you click on this, and if you click on Tasks, you'll see that my tasks are showing up here. So, and now let me just show you uh, another tip. So I have a task here. And so I can easily do all of the tasks that I would normally do. So I can add a new task here of, you know, um, post archive webinars on YouTube. And I can have it show up here. I can do the other things that I like to do in Google Tasks, like add due date. So maybe I want to do that by tomorrow. I can add additional notes where maybe I say, um, you know, Chrome Ninja Tips. And if I go back to my list, you know, I see that here. 
if I go to my Gmail account, you'll see that it's shown up here. Now, post archive webinar. So I don't have to go into Gmail every time I think of a new task that I want to do. And it will also show up in my calendar with that due date. So if I go ahead and open up my calendar, I can actually open it from my new tab page on my main app screen. Looks like I haven't set this one up. Again, working from a demo account here. Um, and so now if I look at my uh, my calendar, if I look under my calendars, I'll see there's a tasks calendar. So if I enable that tasks calendar, you'll see that that same task that I posted due date to is now showing up right here on the 17th, and that's the place where I need to get it done. So the Google Task extension works, you know, anywhere. You can add due dates that sync with Google Calendar. You can add it into Google, into Gmail. It will all show up. But what I like the most is that you can be on any page, and let's say, you know, there's something that I want to, maybe I want to remember that I want to go to comatize.com. If I select this text and then I right-click it or control-click on a Mac or two-finger click on a Mac, I can go create task for, and then it takes whatever I have highlighted on a page. So then I get a little notification that says task has been added successfully. So if I look at my task list now, you'll see that it has that text highlighted and it links to the web page. So you'll be able to go from wherever you are, you'll be able to go right to that web page. So if you're taking notes while you're going around the internet or you have different tasks or you have different things that you want to read, you could easily add them to your task list just by highlighting it and then right-clicking. And then you can also do things like add different due dates. And so here's my power tip. It also has a, um, a search keyword shortcut built-in. So if I just type in T space, you'll see that T space, I have Google Tasks by Google show up. So I can say, um, remember to... Uh, what else do I need to do? Remember to um, post slides for a webinar. Now, if I just hit return, I'll get that task added, and now you'll see remember to post slides for a webinar. So I don't even have to click on the extension. I can even just do it right from the Chrome Omnibox. Again, I just hit T space, and then I can just start typing away. So another nice one that we have here is Google Dictionary. So if you install Google Dictionary, anytime you're on any page and you double-click it, you'll see, oh, I guess there's no definition for comer size. I wonder why. So, you know, if I want to look up fitness here, I double-click it, you'll see that it'll show the definition of it. It'll also allow you to play it, and it shows you where that information came from. And it basically is tying into Google Search and Google's uh, dictionary function within search. So that's an, a nice one when you're browsing the web. There's the Google plus one button. So that will let you plus one any web page that you're on. You'll see that I've got a plus one button here. So if I want to plus one, you know, this page, looks like this page already has 13 plus one. So if I plus one it there, it'll uh, add an additional plus one. Looks like I'm waiting for that little notification to pop up. Uh, another thing, Google Plus notifications. So if you're using Google Plus, you might notice that any time you're on a Google property, you'll see your notifications. But what if you're no longer on a Google property, if you're not on Gmail or Docs or Reader or Google Plus itself? Then, you know, if I was here on my Good Food web app, I would have my Google Plus notifications, uh, which I actually don't have any of. I have zero right now. But if I had some, it would show up right here in my browser bar, so I can basically go anytime I've got new notifications in Google+. Google Related. So Google Related is a pretty cool extension because it pulls in um, other information that we think might be interesting. So if there's a map on that page, for example, it'll pull up uh, um, the Google Maps kind of, and it shows up right at the bottom. And you know what? I forgot to find a good website where Google Related will pop up. It looks like this. Web link isn't working for me at the moment. Let me try and reload that. Oh, you know, give it a second. But the Google related would, would basically pop up if I was on any kind of website. So um, it uh, pulls other information we think, you know, like Yelp review for that web page, or let me see if I can do a search for restaurants. So um, 
there's this absinthe restaurant in San Francisco that I, uh, nope, I didn't mean to search dictionary, I meant to search everything. Reset search tool. So let's say if I go to their website, let me see if Google Related will pull it up. Oh, looks like, here we go. So now Google Related is coming in down here at the bottom. It's got a map. So if you want to go quickly to the map, it, shows, it pulls that information up. Reviews. So it'll pull up reviews that I found from Zagat City Search, from, you know, um, Google itself. Images. So it'll pull up images that are related to absence, and then it'll look at other web results. So Google Related kind of assists you while you're on the web of uh, finding other relevant information. And it kind of just pops up when it's there. So Google Docs Viewer. Oops, looks like I capitalized that I there when I didn't mean, um, didn't mean to. Uh, so let me see uh, if I have the Google Docs Viewer. Um, that will allow you to actually see your docs list right from um, this little extension. Oh, looks like I didn't. Uh, let me go ahead and grant access. But now if I see that here, I can see my docs list, I can easily star things, I can search for, you know, webinar, I can get all my different webinar slides that I have here, and I can easily launch it. So Google Docs Viewer is a quick way to get to your docs list. We also have the Docs PDF PowerPoint Viewer. And so this extension, whenever you are on a web page that would have downloaded a .doc, uh, .doc or, you know, doc, some kind of office file, then you would be able to uh, go ahead and, and um, view it with the Google Docs viewer instead of um, downloading it. So search by image is kind of neat because it allows you to select an image and actually search for it. So let's see. Well, let me I need to find an image first. So let me go to um, let me go to one of my bookmarks. Let's see if I can find a bookmark here that's got some kind of image. I think if I select the image, I can have my search Google with this image. So if I right-click or control-click any image, I can then search Google for that image. And it'll do Google search by image feature. And you'll see that it'll kind of do a search. Well, um, these are pages that have this image. Um, here are some similar kinds of images. So it's kind of a neat way to search. Uh, web Clipboard. So if you haven't used Web Clipboard in Google Docs yet, um, it basically allows you to copy things and maintain the formatting that it has. So sometimes uh, copying and pasting gets a little dicey when you're on the web, and that's because um, your computer's copy and paste clipboard function really wasn't optimized for what you do with HTML on the web. So the Web Clipboard will actually allow you to, to copy more rich text. So if I'm, you know, somewhere here and I want to copy this text, I can copy it if I right click and I can copy select into web clipboard and then I can paste it anywhere I want it in a Gmail message or in a Google Doc and have it maintain that formatting. And then we also have send from Gmail. So send from Gmail when you install this um, will launch a Gmail compose window instead of your client's uh, your client email software. So if you pretty much only use Gmail, the web client, to do your email, this is a useful extension because anytime you click on an email link, it'll just open it up as a, from Gmail. So some other productivity um, web apps or web extensions that I like, uh, eyedropper tool. So I'm kind of a nut when it comes to matching my colors, and so I like that the eyedropper tool will actually let me um, pick a color from the web page. So I could pick maybe this red color and show the little box there. And now, if I click on it, you'll see it has the little red color there. It'll show that color, and if I click on it, it'll show me what that, you know, what the, the value is for it there. It's also color picker, so I could be able to manipulate it. So if you use colors very often, that's a neat one. I use this quicker calculator. Um, I find that I'm often calculating things, and this way I don't lose my page or anything. I can do it right from there. Tab menu. So I often have too many tabs open, and there's honestly lots of different extensions um, that you can install for, for different uh, tab optimization. Tab menu is one that I like because I often end up having so many tabs that I don't even know what they say anymore. 
And so tab menu, I pull that up. I can easily close things. So I can easily close things. I can also click and drag it and move it around very easily. So it's kind of a neat way to be able to organize your tab. Last pass is uh, an extension that actually will uh, help you with all of the different passwords that you have. So if you are using LastPass, you can use it on different browsers as well. Um, it will sync your a single account and help you with all of that password management, something that I'm always uh, forgetting how to do that, or forgetting my passwords for all of the various different accounts that we have these days. Weather, so I showed that one. Weather allows me to just quickly see the weather in a certain um, a certain city. So I was just in Long Beach last week for a conference, so I added Long Beach's weather here. And so I get the quick view right in the browser or in the in the browser bar here, but if I click on it, I get a little bit more information. So I, uh, I like to know what it's like outside. I wish it was uh, 60 degrees. Craigslist preview, I showed that one before, which has some great ones. If you're navigating Craigslist, it'll automatically pull out those pictures for you. Um, I can show an example of that, but we're running low on time, and I'd like to get to some of the other things that I have. Auto pager, so auto pager is kind of a neat web app. There are some others that do this as well, where it will smartly detect whether a web page has a kind of standard format for doing next pages, and it'll basically give you an infinite scroll type of um, type of functionality where you'll be able to just continue to scroll instead of having to click on the next page. Read later fast. Oops. Read later fast is great if you want to read things offline, especially if you're on a, a Chromebook. And that's actually kind of a web app and an extension. So if I launch my Read Later Fast, you'll see that, you know, I um, Thanksgiving's coming up next week. I wanted to save some, some things. So if I was offline, I could go ahead and pull this up and be able to read it later offline. And to do that, I would just right-click anywhere on my page. And, uh, oh, you know, for this one, hold on, let me right-click on my page. And I can click on Read Later, and it will save that page. This is not a great page as an example because it's a YouTube page. But if you were on any other page and you right-clicked it and just clicked Read Later, you would know that you could read it later uh, offline. So neat bookmarks. I have that installed here. And this is just a quick uh, way to manage your bookmarks and see all of your bookmark bars and search for them. So it's kind of a, a nice way to, to get to that quickly. And Evernote. So if you use Evernote, it's a great service that allows you to clip different content from all around the web. Um, you can actually be able to do the same thing. A lot of right-clicking happens in Chrome. So if I you know, right-click this, select and right-click, I can go Evernote Web Clipper. I can clip the selection, or I can clip the URL, or I can create a new note in Evernote. So that's an, another nice way of keeping track of things on the web. Awesome screenshots. So this is a, a great tool here. So I can capture a visible part of the page. I can capture an entire part of the page. Google also has its own screen capture web app or extension, and there's a lot of different ones that you can use. So let me go into some of the web apps that I have here. So some of the web apps that I like, um, Offline Gmail uh, is useful in Gmail and Calendar and Docs and Maps. So you can search for these all in the Chrome Web Store, and it basically just goes to the website that we have for them. Same with Wikipedia. Um, Art Project, I think, is just such a cool one that I always like to show it off. If you haven't tried Art Project before, if you haven't gone to googleartproject.com, you can create a short link with it basically using the web app. But we've uh, done these high gigapixel pictures of all of these different um, collections at different museums. So if you go to, say, the Tate, you can view different artwork. You can explore the museum. If you click on the down arrow, or if you click here, you can find all of the different gigapixel levels of, uh, of artwork that we have. And you can just do incredible kinds of zoom. And it looks a lot and feels a lot kind of like how you would do it in Google Maps. But just the detail that you can get on it is just incredible. So that's, that's one that I always like to show. Um, Picnic and Pixlr. So Picnic and Pixlr are both great photo editors, online image editors. Let me just close a couple of these that I have open. So if I open my new tab page, I think Pixlr is just a, a fabulous photo editor that is free online, and it really does a lot of what you would expect to do out of um, Photoshop. You can open images from your computer, you can open from URL, you can open from a library, or you can even just create a new image gives you the ability to have different presets and have transparent backgrounds. And you have a lot of different designs here. And there's filters that you can do. It's really kind of like a, a nice 
Photoshop um, app that's online. Picasa is a great place to manage your photos. And Aviary, Image Editor, Picnic, those are both great places to um, manage your photos. Google Reader, I use Google Reader every day, multiple times a day, and it's a great way to organize your feed. You can kind of think of Google Reader as your inbox for the web. So anytime there's a blog or any other kinds of page that has dynamic RSS feed content, you can add it to Google Reader. Uh, TweetDeck, I like using TweetDeck. It actually has a really nice um, optimized for Chrome type of uh, experience. So, you know, I can just get started without signing in. So you can do a lot of things that you would do in TweetDeck when you actually have to install the client software. You can add columns, you can sign in, you can uh, monitor everything, and it'll bring up notifications if you get new tweets and app replies and notifications, etc. For reading, the Google the, or the Kindle Cloud Reader and the Google Books Reader, those are both very good. Um, I showed you the Read Later Fast, and uh, YouTube is just your YouTube website. Timer Tab is one that I like because sometimes I need to have some kind of time presentation or timed activity, and if I click on it, you'll see it's kind of, I think it's very visually pleasing. So I can start a timer, I can start an alarm, I can start a stop, stopwatch. Um, so it's kind of a, a neat tab that is uh, really kind of clean. Um, there's also Lucid charts. So I know a lot of people like to do uh, mind maps and other kinds of charting. And so Lucid Chart is a free Chrome app that you can use with that. So I can pull that open um, while I'm waiting for that. Chrome Remote Desktop Beta. So this allows you to do things like promoting, which means that you're allowed to, um, uh, on somebody else who has the Chrome Remote Desktop Beta installed, it will allow you to actually kind of remote into their computer and, and access their computer, which is really useful in help desk type of scenarios or um, uh, any any kinds of ways if you want to be able to dial into somebody else's computer, and it really does it via that Chrome browser. So Lucid Chart, here's some, some great collaborative chart editing. It's a HTML5 app, so um, you can actually go ahead and share it out with people. It gives you some, some great functionality there. Um, I also have this key hero typing task because I need to keep my typing skills sharp. And Desmos is a graphing calculator I have installed that's a very powerful Chrome web app and just HTML5 uh, web app um, that, that's very useful and um, a great online calculator. So you can load it up and, and play around with it. One other one I have is Beat the Boot. It's just kind of some fun games that's uh, playing on the idea that Chromebooks beat up, beat or boot in less than a minute. So there are games that you can play in less than a minute and see if you can beat the boot time. Chromebooks actually beat up, boot up in um, less than eight seconds. So, uh, so and then I have this even more section. So I've got a bunch of educational web apps that uh, I've heard from other uh, teachers and educators and. Um, math board, this is a paid one, but Quizlet is kind of neat. It allows you to create different vocabulary uh, uh, flashcards quickly. BioDigital Human is really fascinating, and um, it allows you to go very deeply into anatomy, and it's very rich. It's using the WebGL standard for that's a fairly new that Chrome handles very well that you can't even believe it's a web app. Um, word search puzzle. The Elementals is a fun um, game kind of that, that explains all the different uh, periodic elements. Um, carrot sticks and practice math are kind of a, carrot sticks is more of a fun game for younger students to practice their math skills. Um, same with practice math. Uh, 20 Things I Learned is a web app that shows 20 things I learned on the web about browsers. So it's kind of a neat one to have people explore. Box.net is one for um, people who are uh, want to have access to online, basically an online locker or an online drive, hard drive. And Box also has applications on Android and iOS, so you could be able to access those files from any different device, including your Chromebook or Chrome browser and everything. Um, theme Creator. So if you want to create a theme for Chrome, you can use the Theme Creator. Uh, talk about Lucid Chart. Um, Me Genius is kind of a neat app. It allows um, uh, to kind of customize uh, storybooks, children's storybooks, and it will also read to them aloud. So those are some interesting on the more educational side of web apps. Some other extensions that I that I find useful, Boomerang for Gmail. This allows you to kind of remind you to send another email later on. Uh, Chrome to phone. So if you want to have a link, you're using Chrome, 
Um, and you want to look on it on your Android. Um, you can actually install an Android app called Chrome to Phone. And when you install the Chrome extension Chrome to Phone, you can basically send different web pages to your phone. So that way, instead of having to email yourself links or, you know, find some other way to, to send them, you can kind of send them for, for looking at your phone later on. Session Buddy is another way for you to keep track of different windows and sessions. So, for example, if you had a Chrome session where you had three windows open and maybe it was for a demo that you were doing or some kind of training, you could save that session and easily relaunch it the next time you're doing a training. Incredible Start page. So this kind of redoes the new tab page. <coughs> Excuse me. Um, and some people really like the, the look and feel of that. I, if, you're, if you're not that a big fan of the new tab page, you can take a look. Chrome Tips Beta. So I actually just installed this one. Apparently, it'll give you some neat little Chrome tips while you're browsing the web. App Jump App Launcher. So I actually have that here. And uh, so if you've got different, all those different web apps installed, instead of opening a new tab page, you can actually access it all from um, the App Jump uh, extension right there. So it kind of gives you another way of doing that. Chrome Box uh, is, a, is a great accessibility extension that um, does text-to-speech. Um, and the Google URL shortener, another one that I use frequently just for shortening URLs and getting a QR code. Popcom is an interesting one where it's a text expander. So it allows you to kind of, if you're always typing the same type of uh, phrase or, or other types of, um, other types of uh, common phrases, you can save it as a shortcut and be able to then share it or use it later in email or in docs or anything. This other one, Web of Trust, this will kind of give you an idea of how trustworthy is this page. It's a very popular one. And then we also have Shareaholic, which allows you to quickly and easily share different web pages, no matter where you are on the web, because those extensions stay with you. Uh, one other note I wanted to realize I forgot to talk about, you can drag and drop your web apps on the new tab page, but you can also drag and drop your extensions. So if you want to reorder your extensions, you can easily select that extension and drag and drop it as well. So, you know, I'm sorry that I ran out of time. There was just so much to show. But um, this is uh, one other thing. A lot of people, when they move to Chromebooks, are talking about, oh, how do I do this, that, or the other? And the four main buckets that I hear people doing are kind of, how do I do video editing? How do I, you know, start listening to music? And how about uh, all this image ed editing? Uh, so WeVideo is a great image editing online collaborative, sorry, video editing uh, website. It's really great. It's not necessarily in the Chrome Web Store, but it's a great website. Lots of great options for listening to music, including Google Music, which I forgot to put on here. We also have image editing like Pixlr, which I showed off in Picnic and Aviary. And then some of those more technical things, like if you need to do things on other types of computers, you can use Chromoting or there's Aircom and Citrix options for remote desktop um, use into other computers if you need to use some kind of client software like CAD or um, if you have a uh, photo editor or image or video editor that you really need to use kind of another uh, desktop computer. So anyways, again, I apologize for rushing through a bit that at the end, but I'll take a, another five minutes to go through some of the questions. Um, and again, let me go back to the first page. I, I saw a couple requests here for uh, the link to these slides, and you can absolutely share them. Um, let me just see if I can, oops, oh, you know, I think I, ta I tabbed it into the chat box. So I'm going to tab it one more time into the chat box so you can feel free to share this um, outside all the, any, anywhere else that you want to go. So let's see, I have a couple other questions about the archive webinars. So I put a link here on this homepage also to archive webinars. Um, the reason why we haven't sent out the email yet is we're still converting it into the YouTube format so that you don't have to use the WebEx client in order to view it. But if you look on this past webinars page that I have on this first slide, you'll be able to access the WebEx version if you need to see it right away. And so are there plans to organize apps on the new tab page? So absolutely, and I, and I did demo that. You can drag and drop them. There's also that thing, uh, these uh, categories down at the bottom that you can drag and drop them into. And if you double click, you can rename them. So the ability to kind of uh, uh, jump between them is also another thing that you can do. And so let, let's see some of these other, other uh, questions we have here. So somebody's having some issues with um, installing Chrome extensions um, and having to reinstall them as uh, rebooting the machine. 
Um, and so that might be, uh, I don't know if the, the machine is getting wiped all, it might be clearing all the cache and cookies. Um, it, it might also be logging them out of the Chrome browser. So you should check to make sure, again, you can do that under that wrench menu. You can sign in. And that's where you'd want to be able to see if they're signing, if they're signed in into the uh, Chrome browser. All right. Um, let me pull up some other questions here. Again, I'm sorry about the lag that some people were seeing. Uh, so is the Chromebook essentially a big tablet but without touch? I'm trying to think this through. So the Chromebook, really if you want to think about the Chromebook, it is the Chrome browser itself, except, and, and nothing else. So it's a computer that has a, uh, it's not a touch screen, it's got a full keyboard, and it just is the Chrome browser. So it lets you do everything that you can do on the web. We kind of cut the fat of all the rest of the operating system and really are getting you to the things that we think you need most, which is just, just the web. Um, so if you think on a Chromebook where the school district has locked down the extensions for that account, does that mean when a student is on their home computer, do they only get those apps and extensions the district said you could use for that account? You know, that is a very good question, and I um, will have to check on that. So I'll post the answer to that in the Q&A transcript. Are there any plans to have a Chrome browser in Android tablets? Um, you know, unfortunately, I don't know the answer to that. Uh, I um, imagine that there must be some people talking to each other and that I'm not on the Android team, so I really wouldn't be able to talk um, talk, that, uh, talk about that. So can you search within tasks? That's a good question. I don't believe with the current task um, uh, implementation you can search, but uh, there are, is a task API, so there might be some other people who have developed extensions that would be able to uh, search your extensions. So I see some people, fans of Chrome Remote Desktop Beta, glad, glad to hear that. Um, uh, I, yes, I don't have Angry Birds installed on my demo account, but for, uh, for those that are wondering, I do have it installed on my personal account. So I didn't show some of the web apps that I have on my personal account. Um, shared some of the, the education-specific webinars, so hopefully you guys got some of those. Um, and the VMware app for Chromebooks. So uh, Citrix and VMware, um, you know what, I'm not sure about VMware. Right now I know about Citrix and about Aracom. Um, I'm not sure about VMware, but Citrix, Aracom, and Chrome Remote Desktop Beta allow you to remote desktop into another, uh, another computer. So all three of those are solutions right now. Um, and then let's see. Uh, Let's uh, look at um, how can I shorten my address bar to short, show more extensions. So the address bar should actually shorten automatically as you continue to add extensions. Um, it kind of just shows up. What might actually happen is um, is that you there's usually some kind of drag bar that, that might be if you're not seeing all of them, and you can just kind of drag it over. So it's either on the left or the right. I can't. Oh, here it is. So actually, if you are on right next to your address bar, you can. Oh, you can uh, expand and uh, and, and uh, expand the address bar and shorten it. So if you go right to the right of the of the address bar next to the star, you'll get that kind of icon showing up that'll allow you to drag and drop it. All right. Well, you know, unfortunately, we're over time, but thank you everybody for joining, and I hope that you've got some new ideas of extensions and web apps that you can install on your Chrome browser.